Welcome back everybody. Now today I'm taking a look at three as seen on TV tech accessories to see if they really work. That's today's video. The ASEAN TV industry was kind of quiet for a while, but they've come back recently with quite a few products, so I've got another three to test out today. Let's take a look at the three contenders. In no particular order, this is the PowerPod, which is an ASEAN TV keychain phone charger. They claim it provides hours of instant power. It's rechargeable, versions for Apple or Android. It's a whopping 800 milliamp hours. This is the Desk Call. This is simply a phone holder that goes on your desk or counter. It's kind of a companion to the Cup Call, which was their car version. They say it's fully adjustable and provides hands-free viewing of your smartphone device. This is the Bell & Howe Spin Power. It's a 10-port charging station. It features a 40-inch retractable cord, four 15-amp power outlets, six USB ports, three phone shelves, and a swivel design. It also functions as a surge protector, but it's not designed for large appliances. Let's get started first up with the Bell & Howe Spin Power. Let me guess, arbitration agreement, of course. Goodness. Very first impression is that it's a little bit smaller than I thought it was going to be. About nine inches tall, top to bottom. I guess small might be a good thing here. First up we got, do not do a lot of things to use this. I notice here it says max of 2.1 amps. So across the bottom, you've got a row of AC outlets. You got four of those and then you've got six across this row of USB ports. It says hold the base while pulling the cord out. Oh, it does spin. I guess that's where the name spin power comes from. So we've got a nice decent length cord here. And then I guess to retract it, you just turn the top. All right, I guess that's not so bad. Maybe a bit gimmicky maybe. I'm gonna read these over before I get started and take a look at the spin power. The only thing that spins is when you're retracting the cord, which if, I don't know how often that's gonna be used. It does seem to kind of work. It's not automatic. It seems a little bit difficult to turn, but let's try it out. So now what I'm gonna do is load this thing up and max it out and see if I can actually put 10 things on here and see how organized that really feels. I've got a phone wall on the back here from a different review. This phone's not fitting in there. So you have a phone there and you can fit a phone right there. I'm gonna plug this in. Power is on. And I'm gonna put another phone on here. It is charging. All right, without a case, it fits in the shelf. Let's keep adding stuff. So how about some camera batteries? Camera batteries are charging. How about a couple of rechargeable flashlights? You definitely have to use two hands because it's not heavy enough that you can just kind of shove it in there on its own. We got more stuff to plug in though. How about if I plug in the power pod? This shelf is really sketchy. It doesn't sit back enough. The middle one's fine because it holds it for both sides. This one, I don't think I'd trust my phone in that. I've just got the six USB ports plugged in. We've got to fill in the four AC ports now. How about a coconut lamp? I think this was for my LED light comparison quite a while back. Another battery charger. That doesn't go in all the way. That's not coming out either. That's probably close enough. Let me turn this off. This is messing my light up. It's oh man, I'm leaving this off. Here's another battery charger. This is another one that kind of goes vertically. All right, here we go, last one. Well, you know, I did it. I got 10 things hooked in there. You almost can't even see the spin power. It's just buried in there. It looks like an organizational mess. You know, there's wires everywhere. I guess just because you can use 10 things doesn't mean you should. And I really don't think the spin aspect is gonna be used very often, especially when you have stuff plugged in there. It's more for storing it. But it does do what it says it's gonna do, so I give it credit for that. Next up, desk call. A little bit of assembly required here. Okay, where's my arbitration agreement? Oh, I don't have one. Almost disappointed not to get an arbitration agreement. So the base actually feels a little bit heavier than I expected. I was expecting this to be cheap plastic. Well, I guess it is cheap plastic, but there is something heavy in the bottom that's making that a bit of weight to it, which is good. You know, what's interesting is that the instructions talk about how to attach these two, which are already attached, but it doesn't anywhere address how to attach these two. I assume you just stick it in there, I don't know. Luckily, my guess was right. I'll just go over these carefully, make sure I get it down, and then we'll try it out. All right, let's take a look at the desk call now. There really isn't a lot to it. Oh, they do have these in pretty minimal instructions, which point out the few features worth mentioning. You close the cradle around your phone like that. You push this button to release it. It can rotate this way, it can rotate this way, and it can rotate that way. Let's try it with a couple phones and cases and see how it works. First up, an iPhone XS Max. 
I like the fact that the base rotates. I'm gonna to try to rotate it like FaceTime someone. Now it goes quite a ways up, which isn't really useful. I wish it went down a little bit more. I'd like to have it about like that. I don't think it needs to go up that high. I guess if you're standing up, it's not a smooth turn. It seems a little bit imbalanced like this, but maybe it'll work anyways. All right, I mean, it seems pretty solid. I guess for video calling, that's not bad. I just wish I could tilt it down a little bit more. That would be ideal from where I'm sitting. The top half of the screen is all just ceiling. So let me see, releasing it now. That's pretty standard. That was an iPhone XS Max with no case on. Let's try it with a case. All right, well, there's no difference in the tilting. It's still not optimal, but it will work. Let me see if I tilt it this way. I mean, it seems like it's holding it. What's weird is you can rotate the phone beyond where it's useful. Like, why would you want it like that? There's no point in doing that. I'm impressed that it's holding it. That's pretty good. I should say if I'm standing up, this tilts to a very nice angle. I do think it could come forward a little bit more, but the fact that it doesn't probably isn't a deal breaker. Let's see how well it holds it up. I'm a little bit impressed. It's holding it. Well, may it slid out, but I think that other holders would have probably fell right out. So, I mean, it seems to hold it pretty securely. It has these rubber grips on the side. For what it is, it works pretty well. This is one instance where the ASEAN TV industry put out a product without high expectations and those relatively low expectations were met. Let me try a smaller phone here. This is my daughter's old iPhone 6S. It's holding it pretty well. Let me see, rotate it that way. I'd say it's holding it, yeah. Let me try this without the case on. It, it's holding it in place. Oh, maybe it's not. I just, I just hit the button, it's falling out. I guess when you're rotating this, you have to make sure you don't hit that button because that's what I just did. So supposedly this can go up to three and a half inches wide. It seems to be accurate. Any of you guys have a, a two inch phone out there? I pulled one out of the drawer we used to have many years ago. Who remembers this one? I'm talking in 2009? I just wonder if this will fit. If it holds this one, then it's gonna hold anything out there today. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's holding it. I don't think this phone even had an ability to rotate the screen. I do feel like the desk call does what it's supposed to do. It doesn't make lofty claims, but that's good because it doesn't really do a lot. But what it does do, it seems to do pretty well. So I think the desk call actually works. Mm -hmm. And finally, the PowerPod. I actually saw something just like this advertising about a year ago on social media. I tried to order it and the website was so bad I couldn't order it. So I'm, I'm kind of glad that these kind of came out under the As Seen on TV domain because I really wanted to try this. I got a lot of requests for the original that wasn't the PowerPod, it was uh, just a generic brand. Not much to it, you have a key ring and a holder, which I'll probably skip those. Some brief instructions and a survey. And there seems to be a, a lever right here that allows you to slide the connector out and hide it, which actually I like that. I'm just gonna put on the charger just to make sure it's completely charged and then we'll get started. All right, here is the power pod and down here I've got an iPhone 7 Plus with a battery at 10%. Now the iPhone 7 Plus is about 2,900 milliamp hours for a new battery. This is a couple years old, so it's aged a little bit, but typically it's 2,900 milliamp hours. The power pod, 800, so that should only give me about a 30% boost, but let's see if that's actually the case. And let's see how long it takes to give me that boost. I have no apps running, the phone was just restarted. Let's plug it in. All right, it does show it charging. Let me start my other phone for a stopwatch here. Hey, it's already gained 1%. We'll see how long it takes to fully deplete the power pod into the iPhone 7 Plus. So I'm gonna let this go and I'll come back and see how long it takes. I should point out there is a blue indicator on the side of the power pod to let us know that it is actually charging. And of course, this is not scientific. Every phone is gonna be different. Every battery is gonna have a different wear on it. So it's just one example of how well it's actually working, but it should be a good demonstration of how generally well the power pod works or doesn't. All right, I came out here to check at the one hour update which is right here. I just checked it about 10 minutes ago. It was still charging, but look at this. The light is off. So let's see how much juice I actually got out of it. So I got a whopping 19% in one hour. It is no longer charging either. Wow, that's not so impressive. But I have an idea of something I can do to compare it to. This is a 25,000 milliamp hour charger. It's not one that goes on your keychain, but it costs me the same as the power pod, even though it's much larger. Let's see how much it charges my phone in one hour. This also has three outputs. This could charge three phones on one charge easily. All right, so we're at 29%. It is now charging. I'm gonna come back in one hour and see what percentage this is at. We were at the one hour mark. Let's check it out. And in one hour, we're 86%. That went up almost 60% in one hour as opposed to the 
power pod which went up 19 percent these cost the same thing for me yes this is more compact this is going to keychain this can't i have to believe there's better options than that out there for 20 bucks i have to believe it by the way charging this does take about 90 minutes a little under an hour to discharge and you'll get a moderate boost to your phone nothing impressive i'd be good in a pinch but it will not be something that you can really expect a full charge on all right so it's been a while since i did those original tests i've been using these products for a while and here are my final thoughts let's take a look at first at the spin power now I know my test showed how ridiculous it looks with having 10 things attached to it, but other than that, I actually like this product, and here's why. Number one, I like the fact that each outlet has its own face. It's not really competing with the other outlets. When you've got an old school power strip like this, they're always competing. You know, if it's oversized, it takes up maybe two or three outlets on this one, and this doesn't have any USB ports. I know it's old, but a lot of us still use old school power strips like this one. It does have 10 outlets, but you rarely would get 10 things on there anyways. Traditional power strips typically go on the floor because the cord isn't very long. This cord's pretty long. It does look attractive enough to put it on a desk. And if you got something small, like something like this, you can plug into it. You don't have to have this on the floor and fish around for it. You can have it right there on your desk. Easy access, that's a good thing. I don't really use the shelves as much. The center one I think would be more useful than the other two. The two on the sides I don't think are very useful. As far as the spin feature goes, if you're going to be moving the charging station regularly, then the ability to retract the cord like that is quite useful. If you're just leaving it in one spot, it defeats the purpose because you're never going to be really using the spin feature. The only thing that the spin power spins is the cord when you're retracting it so if you never retract the cord you're never spinning it overall I've actually grown to like this I think that it looks nice it's durable I think 30 bucks might be a lot for it but I think if you do buy one you're probably gonna like it on the other hand if you buy a power pod you'll probably be disappointed now I had some other tests planned for this one but when I saw how weak it was at 800 milliamp hours I kind of realized that no test is gonna make this look better it's just very weak I did a cursory search on Amazon I found a similar product called the iWalk which has 4500 milliamp hours over five times more powerful than this. And that one also has a feature that plugs right in your phone, doesn't use a cord. So there are other options out there, not to mention something like this. This has 25,000, so 30 times more powerful than the power pod. I just think that for 20 bucks, you can do a lot better than the power pod. And I guess that would leave the desk call somewhere right in the middle. I think that if you like what you see for the advertising for desk call, it will work. I mean, it doesn't really do a lot. It just holds your phone and rotates. The only complaint I have is that I wish it tilted forward a little bit more, but other than that, it holds the phone pretty well. It's easy to operate. It's pretty versatile as far as rotation in multiple directions goes, because you can go this way, this way, and that way. So really, I think the desk call does what it's supposed to do. It doesn't do a lot, but what it does do, it does well. It's funny, these three products kind of mirror the whole ASEAN TV industry. You've got one that works pretty well, one that kind of works okay, and one that doesn't really work that well at all. ASEAN TV industry is always a mixed bag, and this is definitely a mixed bag of ASEAN TV products. But if you've used these products, tell me what you think in the comments below. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you next time.